the morning comes, we must never surrender. America will get better and better. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. And lastly, maybe the big, big, big events, because what's happening in Wisconsin, ground zero of urban workers fighting back to demand the right for collective bargaining. Tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Lena, Senator Lena Taylor, who is one of the uh, senators on leave. Uh, it's interesting enough that we say that when you have people in uh, Egypt nonviolent resistance step back, that's a good thing, but you guys are becoming the bad guys of the deal. But you're standing tall, this having tremendous impact here and around the world. Tonight we have a very special guest, Senator Lena Taylor, who is uh, uh, in the Dred Scott tradition. She's a runaway. Uh, <laughs> matter of fact, the entire Senate ran away, uh, refused to vote in, um, in the Wisconsin uh, labor debacle. Why did you guys run away? It was the only way that we could slow this bill down so that we could make sure that people had an opportunity to see what was in it and to make sure the Wisconsin workers had an opportunity to have a voice you know, um, as an African-American woman who's only the fifth African-American to be a state senator in my state, only the second African-American woman and the only African-American woman in the Senate, I couldn't sit down while they took away rights. It's just not something I could do. So in, in a real sense now, what else do they want out of the bill? Now, uh, Scott was on television, Walker was on uh, MSNBC and said, if, if you take all of the benefits and wages, if they give all those back, do you accept them back? He said no. Okay. It's meant this issue is not about the wage and benefits, it's about the workers' collective bargaining rights at the table. As usual, Reverend, you're right on the head. Uh, he specifically asked for concessions in health care, concessions in pension. They gave him that. And, and for clarity, they gave it to him before he did his budget repair bill, the teachers did. After his budget repair bill, the correction officers, the municipality employees, those individuals uh, conceded to everything that he wanted. So the argument is, is if this is for your budget repair bill, then you got everything you want. You won, Governor. Why don't you just give the people their rights back? Uh, because that's not what it's about. And Apparently, he's, he's using as a, the issue of jobs as a, as a pretense. Yeah. Uh, is, in his revealing conversation, he says <laughs> several things in that. He says that he is, is coordinated. He's connected with Florida and other and, and, and other governors. Quite. Second, he co considered using some thugs, uh, uh, provocateurs, to disrupt and create violence as a scene. He didn't think it would look good, so he kind of backed, he right. backed away from it. He really believed in that. Right. Uh, it shouldn't happen in Egypt, but it's all right for it to happen in Madison, Wisconsin. And he tried to bamboozle the state senators by, to, to trick them into coming back. Yeah. Now let's back up what happened. Uh, Governor Walker was called out of the blue by a guy who claimed to be uh, someone named David Koch who's a billionaire who all over the country is funding efforts to destroy unions. Uh, and uh, the fascinating thing about David Koch and their family is I've studied them as a historian. Uh, they're a right-wing family. They've been involved in right-wing politics for, for decades, for generations. They, that family made their money building the oil infrastructure in the 1920s in the Soviet Union. So we have this, 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 this group that's basically trying to destroy workers' rights. He calls, uh, a prankster calls and claims to be David Koch. Mm -hmm. The governor drops everything, spends 20 minutes on the phone, mm -hmm. no reporter, no constituent can get him on the phone. And what he does is he or reveals- legislator. Or legislator. He reveals that he is in a conspiracy to defraud the people of Wisconsin. He, it, he, he, he reveals that he is in a conspiracy to strip basic fundamental civil rights from the people of Wisconsin, the teachers, the workers. And uh, that should be an enormous story. It should be, this is, should be on the front pages. Uh, it's not about austerity. It's about making it's ordinary about people's austerity lives. Austerity for some and prosperity for others. The, and, well, 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 one quick thing, actually. And, and then in the budget that he's passing has provisions, and this is, this is, this is where the conspiracy comes it. in. Uh, the, the budget has a provision to be able to sell off the, the, the state-owned uh, energy assets to the high, to the, not the highest bidder, to no bidder, no bid contracts. The Koch family is in the energy business. It's a conspiracy. I, I want you to expand upon that, that, that he reserving the right to mm -hmm. unilaterally determine, right? That's correct. Uh, can sell off energy. Yes. And the Koch family is eligible to buy the energy. Correct. And they opened up a lobby office in Madison 
Um, so the <clears throat> fact that he's on the phone with them saying that, you know, he wants to take a trip to California and thanking him for the um, investment that they've made is goes a little far in our state because you can't use your political office for any gain. So the fact that they're in this industry, there's a no bid contract piece in where he or his staff can unilaterally make the decision without any input from the legislature is just way over the top. But there's another piece for black people in particular that concerns me. Uh, Health care. You know, um, MA. Uh, Badger Care is our own health insurance piece. He can unilaterally change the eligibility requirements that don't even have to meet the federal requirements. So this is, you know, really overreaching. In this budget repair bill, a third of it has non-policy stuff like this that, you know, frankly, people don't even have an opportunity to know I'm, about. I'm, I'm astonished. I must say, uh, uh, Don, that he has not been totally discredited given all of a hearing. Well, totally discredited by the media. Uh, <laughs> Don't be astonished. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. I think the media is off basically essentially in our country a status quo, uh, get along to go along kind of group and body. But yes, I think but eventually they're pulling, they're pulling for him. It's like he's doing the right thing, and these senators have run away. So he's like doing his duty. I mean, he is getting the benefit of all these doubts and his information about he gets the, the play uh, into uh, the frame that he's uh, yeah, but he's well, he, he, preparing the, uh, the our main paper budget. in our city in Milwaukee did not even put the story when he spoke with the Koch brothers. Didn't even put it on the front page of the paper. It was like way back somewhere else. Where? It was only Fox News that most recently had began to. Tell more of the truth than before. Which is know. an irony. Well, yeah, it really is. Loose. It really is. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. I was I mean, shocked. You know, the, 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 I really think that on the right, they realize that they backed a horse that doesn't have the doesn't have they the muscle tell. to do yeah. it. So they have to cut him off at the knees, right. and that's going to be interesting to see. But Jonathan, what else I see in the part of this bigger picture is that if you for if for the corporations, you remove Glass Steagall for the banks. And then corporation becomes an individual, and they can give as much money as they want to a campaign. So you remove the roof for the wealthy, right. and then you remove the floor for the poor. So you have the, the revolution against the Roosevelt principles of a reasonable roof for the wealthy and the floor for the poor. He had no floor for the poor and no roof for the rich. I know, and when you look at what is the uh, tipping point, unfortunately, here, this is um, uh, a war of the poor, that um, now there are more public sector workers um, in absolute numbers that are unionized and there are private sector workers. So the way the uh, debate is being framed is uh, public sector workers are living at the lethargis and uh, living uh, like, uh, like, uh, like their royalty mm -hmm. versus the average American there's, workforce where the conversation there's there's, there's should be... There's another lie actually. Yeah, yeah that, that public sector workers make more for the same jobs than private sector workers. That's absolutely false. But this is it's the first time it's up. tipped where in fact, on average, public sector workers, because of the rights that they have secured, are faring better than private sector workers. Private sector has been gutted out and shipped abroad, and we need to raise up private sector pay. The public sector is not overpaid. Go we'll come back and talk more about the struggle at Ground Zero in Wisconsin. It is now in Ohio, it's on its way to uh, your state. The plight of workers, workers are on the attack. Be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. You know. What well, I want to focus a bit on here, uh, Don, is that there is a, a bigger context here of the states facing insolvency, cities facing bankruptcy, laying off 1,900 teachers in the Rhode Island, 100,000 teachers in Texas. I mean, what's going on here? You, you take the trigger dollars, misadventure in Iraq and Afghan off the table. You bail out the banks with billions without link to lending and reinvestment so you have the home focus of crisis off the agenda. You have the huge... Uh, uh, health bill where the you, you maintain the uh, right of insurance companies to keep moving and keep raising fees off the table. Then at Christmas time you give the billionaires a huge tax cut and you give them a bonus of a real estate of an estate tax deal. Now let's discuss the money. You take all the meat off the table, mm -hmm. nothing's left but the gravy. This is a this is a bigger question of great turmoil. There are twenty million government workers, twenty million, five million states and 15 million uh, metropolitan or uh, uh, municipal. Mm -hmm. So that's like one to three. If you, if you lose a highway patrolman, uh, it doesn't hit you so much. You lose a policeman, you lose them, you, you miss them very much. You're talking about coming direct at cities. This whole big, it's not just public employees versus private. The cutback on state and city workers have a devastating impact on jobs, middle class, and services. Yeah, it certainly does, and that's one reason I'm hoping the president 
does what he said he would do in um, mm -hmm. 2007 when he was running for president. He said, as pre if I, when I become president, I will put on some comfortable shoes and go to anywhere they're trying to take workers' rights away. And now Wisconsin is waiting. Come, Mr. President. And I'm hoping he does if, that. If he did that, that would be tremendous. What, what would happen? That would be a tremendous signal to, to the country, to the world. The rest of the world now is trying to embrace democracy. Embrace it. They're dying for it in the streets. And here in the United States, we're taking people's rights away. Well, the, the, the but it right. It would also be an opportunity for Governor Walker to have an instant platform to run for, for, for president. Um, and that's so, what they want him to do. Exactly. I mean, they're already on their Let websites and everything. You can't everything always be politician. afraid of that, though. You, sometimes you have to step up but, but, and do the right but, thing. But, but at least... Yeah, uh, he only uh, has a high school diploma. But, but at least the right wing... <laughs> yeah. The right wing has a point of view, and they will fight for that that's point right. of view. Democrats seem to waver. Right. Except these senators in Wisconsin. I've never seen Democrats stand so clear on the position of principle before ever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the fact that, that Senator Taylor and her colleagues are acting like a, we talk about the football, team. I mean, they're actually acting in coordinated ways. I've been to retreats of the Senate Democratic Caucus, and not to, you know, spill confidences, they barely know each other. And the fact that we have people acting in solidarity and uh, putting their foot down, leadership matters. You know, in, in Ohio, we, we, I left Wisconsin and went to Ohio, and there's this woman named Marv Harris, outstanding educator. For 35 years, she was an educator. She's on the State Board of Education. And the governor cases decided to remove her unilaterally. I mean, he, she read in the paper she had been moved. So there's a huge movement to get her restored. Uh, but in the absence of collective bargaining, you can be moved on unilaterally exactly. and arbitrarily. With collective bargaining, he couldn't do that to her if she were in, in the union. Exactly. And, that's, and so the union is not just about money, it's about the dignity of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of being preserved. You can't put your friend in, it's against nepotism, or yeah. uh, race, or gender. You have to have some basis. It gives for accountability is exactly what it gives. It gives people an opportunity to be at the table. To be able to give input, it's, it's the you know, it's, it's the freedom of, of really just yeah. being able to give input to the process. And more importantly, you know, one of the things I love is in Wisconsin, we were the place that started, right? The unions, we started this concept of well, workers' a, a, rights. A, but AFSCME started, started, started in Wisconsin, right? Yes, yes. That's right. And we the eight-hour day and that Bayview Weekend. Massacre, the Bayview Massacre, and I think it was 1886. Bob, Bob LaFollette? Yes. Wisconsin? Well, Republican. And Even by the way, I'm from like Wisconsin, too. But, 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 but those, are, but, but those, are, Lincoln, those are Lincoln Republicans. Kind of That's true. And yeah. even the Green Bay Packers. Yes, and the Pope, <laughs> and the Arch, the Archbishop. You know, I'm, what's wrong with him? And Miller. And, and you may not know. Did you know that um, uh, Governor Walker's father is a is a preacher? I'm just wondering where he was sitting when his father was preaching, because his his integrity, his ability to uh, be able to be honest, the number of lies that they've caught him in. It's funny that uh, Fox News, you know, caught him in a lie. Uh, the Journal Sentinel has caught him in several lies. But it doesn't, it's like he's Teflon, but you know. You know but, but even, <laughs> even if you think of it from the other side, one of the beautiful things in seeing the Green Bay Packers win, if I can say that, win the uh, Super Bowl, um, the original team yes, to, 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 <laughs> to win the, the Super Bowl, from a township of 100,000 that still maintains an NFL franchise mm -hmm. because of the NFL funding formula that the top 15 revenue producing teams have to share the revenue amongst the lower uh, 16 or 17 teams. So out of the 32 teams, there is some equity. And so this makes it an all-American sports where you still come from small towns. Everybody can get to a field. People can go to the highest level. And so you see this is a very democratic but, game but, but that's played at one level. In this football, but but Green Bay is able to maintain a team because an individual couldn't afford it at the time. But the township Community. picked it up, right. and so this is at the heart and, and the spirit of anything but, but, great. But it's, it's at the heart and spirit of the Wisconsin way. Wisconsin the football work craziness. Yeah. Bears next year. Well, well, yeah. When, when hey, President hey, 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 of, of Obama said he would go to the Super Bowl if the Bears got there, and Woodson from Green Bay yeah. said, we'll go to see him since he will not make it to see the Bears. <laughs> but Woodson stepped up there that he stepped out in favor of yes. the workers and using his the, the, using 
the ambience of his of his uh, of his Green Bay Packers. And you have to applaud him. And there are long term medical issues for so many of these players. Right. These players in the NFL have the shortest life expectancy, just over 55 years. These players have long term medical injuries, like they show show from game to game and week to week, and have to go into all this training and all this rehab while they're in the height of their career. This is an anomaly when you see a few players making millions. Most players are making under a million dollars and have to pay for their own long term health care. Um, we see that with uh, Jim McMahon of the Bears. We see that with the Fridge. We see that with Dave Dewarson. This liability is on them. So there's a microcosm of an example that's happening in the NFL yep. that's going on in Wisconsin. Well, that's we, going we, on we, we, see, we see them as stars, but really they are workers. Yes. All people are, people yeah. are, all kinds of folks are learning something that basically uh, folks that are called Republicans, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, have been trying to erase from their memories for decades. And that's the concept of solidarity. Mm -hmm that, you know, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's but keeper. I want to be clear, in Wisconsin, that nearly Never half a million people who have come out and counting um, to say that they disagree with our governor's bill, there's been Republicans. There have been people who have said, I'm a lifelong conservative. I've always voted We'd conservative. But I specifically feel that this governor has overreached. You know, how about the individuals who endorsed him and said, we endorsed you, and we're sorry we the endorsed police you. Union. Police and yes. teachers, police and firemen yeah. who endorsed him know that if he's able to crush with the right direct law yeah. schemes, and teachers, to one and in, in teachers and firemen next, I, and then private sector next. You're talking about looking forward. What's what's the hope for Wisconsin? Now, Japan is the largest manufacturer of automobiles of any country in the world. It's not the United States. It's through Toyota. It's through Honda. It's not GM, Ford, and Chrysler. Chrysler is now owned by Italians, okay? So we don't even have the big three as we've traditionally known. Uh, there's a huge manufacturing. There was a huge manufacturing presence. Uh, closely tied to automotive all throughout Beloit and Wisconsin. There was heavy industry up in Wisconsin. Now that's gone. So if we're not talking about Wisconsin and education as an epicenter on investing in America and what's good mm -hmm. and great, other than that, Wisconsin is strictly an agricultural state. I got to jump in right there because when you talk about education, it's so very true. I mean, it's one of the reasons why teachers need to be able to be at the table to talk about the conditions of their classroom and the needs of our children. We presently in my city, we lead in the nation. Uh, for the worst reading scores for children that look like me in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So now you're talking about teachers who have 30, 40 kids in their classroom. If they're not able to be at the table, that could be 50, 60 kids in the classroom. So now, how are you telling me that you're going to be able to make it where we can compete economically if our children are not even prepared? It, it's interesting. Mill Walker's face is not on this Wisconsin struggle. So I went and met with mm -hmm. Bishop Dan's and Menaces, but that is a is a Milwaukee a race disparity factor in the attack upon these workers later? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, when 51 percent, 50, 51 percent of our black men in Milwaukee are unemployed. 51 so, percent. Yes, mm. yes, according to Dr. Levine, who's one of the professors in our uh, local community. And so, you know, that's a very uh, frustrating issue. It's one of the reasons also maybe that African Americans weren't as quick, right, to get aboard on this issue. Because in unions, I don't even want to begin the process of talking about who's the last to be hired and the first to be fired and whether or not, you know, we're able to make it. But I sit across this table from you as a lawyer because my parents had union jobs, right? And I was able to be a part of the middle class and get the American dream. But, but what's interesting about, about it, but even, even, even when we walk out of the equation, is that this is essentially white working class people fighting the right wing. Race. For so long, blacks have been the buffer. Mm -hmm. between the wealthy and the poor. Here you see, the, so they, 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 they race language, they got to twist their mouth differently because these are basically white people and white students who are saying that the right wing white is hurting them and cannot use race as a diversion. That's where I think Rick is on the money when he talks about there's this concern among the ruling class of the right wing that Walker has overstepped because now he's... <laughs> He, he's making people this observation. You see all these white faces there. The house of cards is tumbling. The house right. of cards. And what's more, Shepard Smith, a big uh, anchorman on Fox News, yeah. he laid it out. He said, this isn't about the budget right. on Fox News. This is about union busting. But, exactly. but, 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 and it, he uh, said again. it wasn't. But then the Journal Sentinel um, did a, they do this facts check piece. And they said, nope, it is union busting. Yeah. Even the Journal Sentinel. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk more about it. The fact that, back, that blacks are not in the middle of this, they cannot use the traditional race language. Don't they get it? Entitlement, all that stuff. It's, it is a class warfare, and the working class is on the attack. Be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. 
Lena, I, I think that when I left, as I said, Wisconsin, went to Ohio, but this thing is breaking out like a fever. And all the eight or nine states involved in this, they have, there's a consistent pattern, bringing the right to work laws north, uh, using budget as a pretense, really just trying to destroy, collect the bargain workers' place at, at the table. Uh, and of course, if you remove, if you give the huge tax cuts to the billionaires mm -hmm. in December and job cuts in February and March, there's an inconsistent, and yet there's a pattern. They're determined to break the backs of organized labor. In the first eight days that uh, we were in session, this governor had what he called a special job session. In that special job session, zero jobs, but $142 million in tax cuts for businesses. Um, after, <clears throat> and, and, and I got to tell you, during that same time, he converted our Department of Commerce to a new entity. And that new entity, when he did it, he took money that was designated for women, minorities, and disabled veterans for their businesses and capacity building, took it, put it in this new entity. So this with one more time, because somebody might miss what you just said. So we have a Department of Commerce. All right. And he made a new entity. He called it WEDC, okay, Wisconsin Economic Development Commission or Council or something. I forget what the C is for. He took the money from the Department of Commerce that had money designated for minority businesses, women-owned businesses, and disabled veteran businesses. He took that money and all the other money, put it in the new entity. And I said, well, on the appropriation line, can you make sure that we say that it can be appropriated for women-owned businesses, minority businesses, and disabled veteran businesses? Uh-uh, can't do that. Can we at least do a clause that says there's an intent to do that. Uh-uh, we can't do that. So see, first he came for those groups and nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Now, he's come for the trade unions and he's come for, he's making it the teachers, but it's about more than just the teachers. This bill that he's done that he says is a budget repair bill. First of all, let me slow this down long enough to say, the budget repair bill is a farce. We don't have a budget crisis at this juncture. We could change our spending. We have a surplus right now. Okay, there's a trigger, a statutory trigger that normally has to be done for a budget repair bill to be done. We didn't meet that statutory trigger. And the Fiscal Bureau, which is basically the, the people that help us with our budget, okay, they are nonpartisan. They said it. I asked the question and they said it. They've done a letter to even say it. So he did this budget repair bill that's not really a budget repair bill. In it, he says he's doing it to fix his budget. Okay, why is a third of it? have policy in it like the energy plants that we spoke about, the uh, medical assistance eligibility issues that we spoke about, and there's several other issues, transit dollars that we're gonna lose federally because he takes away collective bargaining. So he did this budget repair bill that's not real. It has a third of stuff in it that's not budget related. But let's say that it, we do have a budget crisis. Let's say, let's give him that. So let's look at the budget repair bill. When you look at it, the part that is really, I think, for me, most troubling is he takes away workers' rights. Now, he says that he needed concessions on benefits, health care, and pension. He has that. So that fixes his budget crisis issue that he says he has, not to mention that thousands of workers have requested to retire since he came in and since he introduced this bill. So now you, have, you don't have to do layoffs, like he said, and you have the concessions. So why do you have to take people's right to sit at the table and to be able to talk about their conditions, especially when teachers need to do that, in my opinion, in order for us to be prepared uh, for the future, to compete globally? Don, this is a plan, obviously, that's in Florida, in, in <clears throat> and they are taking to Rhode Island. This plan to, to strip workers and, and basic uh, uh, achievements over the last 40 years is really afoot and serious or so. It seems the White House and the Congress must dig in deep to stop this. Right, because I really don't understand the thinking, the rationale behind this movement, because they're going to have Egypt's and Tunisia's in the streets of America, because people are, are it's starving. It's, it's, happening. it's in yeah. Wisconsin, right. It's going to spread. I, it's just see, so see, people often ask, why is America in the streets, say, as they are in Egypt and yeah. in Yemen and Tunisia? Because there's a vehicle to get to the table. Right. You can you you can process exactly. protections through a union process. 
once the, proce once the right. process is closed, right. then people... And that's that's right. an important point people about Governor, Governor Walker's process in this eight-day special session. Does the reason, the, reason, the reason our comrades are, you know, uh, fleeing is because it was undemocratic. You know, he, he abused exactly. the procedures exactly. and the normal deliberations of the legislative process to try and ram through exactly. uh, an undemocratic uh, bill. Exactly. Yeah, claiming, his, claiming his election is a mandate, but he didn't get it's elected not. campaigning on this. Yeah, this, uh, this guy appears to be corrupt. Uh, well, there's no question, in my opinion, that he's corrupt. I mean, he, he's not honest. And um, it's clear from the, from the call with the Koch brothers. The people can't get to him, right? I've been trying to talk to him since he became the governor and before senator. that as a senator, and he's not made a connection with me. People have been calling him, emailing his office, and he's, they've not been able to get to him. Um, a How? firefighter even spoke about the fact that he tried to speak to him. However, the Koch brother calls, fake Koch brother calls, and they get to him, and they get to him for 20 minutes on the phone, and you talk about procedure, no question that it's an issue. When I sat on the Finance Committee, which is our budget writing committee where we first dealt with this bill, on that committee, they stopped allowing people to even sign up to testify, okay? 350 people were standing outside in line. They refused to let them sign up and testify. Then they decided to cut off their ability to even speak to their legislator. First Amendment, you should be able to have the right to petition your government. Wouldn't let them do that. And I'm sorry, one other thing. So now after that, they say that we should come home because we need to vote. First of all, why? When you look at what happened in the assembly, they cut off the people who were sitting right there. The so, Democrats who were right so, there so, couldn't so, vote. So you're voting me in steamrolled? Oh, my goodness, completely. D Don? Senator, do you have in Wisconsin a recall provision? We do, but we have to wait one year one. in order to recall. So we got 10 months, nine days, two hours, and 15 <laughs> seconds. No, now, now let's, let's, I don't know the exact time, but let's, the point let's, is, let's, let's be serious here. The, the, the people who are uh, working with the Koch brothers and the National Conservative uh, Movement are talking about uh, recalling our a good friend here. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Utah, some individuals from Utah have uh, started the process to recall eight of uh, the senators because eight of us will be up. And so I was tweeting about it and someone was saying, you know, oh, we're going to recall you. And I said, well, first of all, you got to live in my district, you know, in order to be able to recall me. Yeah. And other than that, I stand on my record. I mean, 50% of the legislation that was done last session, I, I authored it. You know, 82 bills that were signed in to law by the governor, I did those. When you come, when you talk about the disparities that exist in our state, we lead in the nation in incarceration of African-American men and women. I put our state on a different track in regards to how we think about corrections. If you want to correct our budget, there are two places you got to do it. One is corrections and the other is education. It's just like national. Nationally, if you want to do something about the budget, you're going to have to do something about how we spend on on wars, how we what we spend in that regard. And so if you're really not well, dealing with that. Black, black population and dash prison population off the top of your head. Oh my goodness, about 60, 70 percent of people who are incarcerated are people of color. And, and who is the population? in the state? Uh, Ten. Maximum, pattern, and that's what uh, everybody... It's a pattern across the country, maybe? I mean, right across the country, that's the pattern. Absolutely, and we also see that this is a Governor Walker, correct me if I'm not mistaken, I'm thinking about it, didn't he... Um, not want to have the high-speed rail money from the federal government. Right, but he's I mean, taking I mean, this train right over to workers of Wisconsin. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, you said and, zero yeah, jobs. No, he, just, he, jobs. he just returned right. billions of right. dollars that he didn't want from federal assistance that could have increased employment and more economic sound like, activity. Sound a little like Christie? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, he is always talking to Christie, and he considers the governor from Indiana his mentor is what he always says. I'm just wondering, can he follow the governor from Indiana? Because of our move, the legislators in Indiana left. And, the and they is left. Christie a superstar, and they are. Labor. They it's are. Incredible. And Governor Walker originally, I'd heard he wanted to run for VP, but now they're propping him up as uh, potentially the presidential candidate. And Christie has kind of came back up and speaking up a little what louder now. Me? But I was trying to make a point about the governor in Indiana, who said he wants his bill killed now yes. in Indiana. And so I'm just wondering if my the governor should follow his The best thing ever happened to President Obama would be if Walker and Christie <laughs> ran as a team. Ooh. They 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 could not survive the breath of right. a campaign. That's, that's more rational. Jonathan? You know, Reverend, we're talking about 50% um, uh, of what we know as the unions in America today are only located in six states. So union uh, is more of a, a thing of the past and a quality and a standard of living. Unions have been battered and beaten down all the way down. This is the last uh, straw. But, uh, but the thing that I wonder if people in the nation really get is that this really is also not just about workers' rights and being at the table in that regard. It's not just about teachers because correctional authors, social workers, I'm concerned about the number of children that will stay in foster care and people who will lose their parental rights. But this is about democracy because there will be hardly no other voice 
in elections at all and the Republicans will completely dominate. Right. And so that is a concern also. You know, this is not why we left. We left because we led. You said 40 years, gov um, um, Reverend uh, Jackson, it's been 50 to 100 years ago that Wisconsin led in the nation on workers' rights. And so you're also talking about the legacy, the Wisconsin way. I mean, this is huge. This is why the Packers the, 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 the attack on American workers is astonishing, you know. The jobs did not go at first, didn't go, they didn't go from male to female. They didn't go from black, white to black. The job went from here to yonder. Right. Our, our corporate trade policy is why we've lost plants closing, jobs leaving, drugs and guns coming. It's great. So we've come full circle now that this really is not about those jobs. It's about a deeper malady in our culture. Mm -hmm. Right back to talk more about in the last segment about, uh, about the challenge in Wisconsin and Ohio and around the country workers rights are on the tack be right back and i'm talking about you be right back in just a moment welcome back there's something pro i want to focus on you know in the present debate where republicans and democrats agreed to get along get along and bail out the banks and yeah. get along and take away the public option from yeah. insurance get along and yeah. give the rich a tax cut in that get along relationship yeah. Poverty, yeah. economic justice, yeah. racial justice, and home foreclosure yeah. is not at that table. In Wisconsin, one begins to see a dynamic people who have been left out of that discussion. And many of these are basic white, middle class, working people who are saying we are not being threatened and damaged by <coughs> this narrow view of, of what and who is America. Yeah. People in the pundit class like to talk about if we just could get the two sides together in the room together to discuss these issues, right. usually involving kind of budget issues, uh, 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 then we can you know, collectively solve the problems. What they're talking about is getting powerful people in the room together so they can cartelize, how they, you know, they can conspire against ordinary folks who are shut out of the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you hear about bipartisanship, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's great. And if Republicans want to come to the side of light and justice, we welcome them. Well, my point is, is that Republicans are fairly clear on their line. Democrats, mm -hmm. that kind of one part of two name phenomenon. You think about it, uh, Wallace was a Democrat. We had to go out, and when the Republicans and Democrats got, we had to go outside that process to get public accommodations. Had to go outside to get the right to vote. Had to go mm -hmm. outside to get public open house at the end of Vietnam War. And so as this uh, group becomes tighter and closer, there are more folk locked out, leaner than locked in. Well, there's no question about that. And when you when you start to talk about not having people, you know, um, really I, I, not just the poor. This is really about the working class, the middle class. You know, no one at the table except the rich, and that becomes a real problem. Nobody at the table who looks like me. So what happened with, with the whole banker thing is, is that without without oversight, uh, congressional leaders were either getting money on Wall Street raising mm -hmm. funds. Are going there as consultants and then left the Congress. So they, in a sense, the, the, the Wall Street purchased them from Congress people who then used their power to do what? Remove the glass to Act, mm -hmm. purchase, use their power to not do oversight, to not stop reverse rent line. This whole housing crisis was driven by a lack of enforcement of community reinvestment law. And this is the exact thing that my governor is doing. My governor has done a lot of overreaching. He's done things where he can review judicial decisions that gave him the power. He's done things to take away legislative power in that special session that I spoke about, um, the job, special job session. He uh, took away legislative power. So he really is showing trends of wanting to be a dictator. He thinks he's the government of one. How is the press in Wisconsin handling this pattern oh, of, uh, of undemocratic uh, actions of his? Oh, give me a break. They're not, um, you know, in my opinion, giving it uh, all of the, first of all, coverage that they need, the clarity, the depth of clarity that they need so that people can really understand what's going on. I was shocked and I was glad though when Fox called him out. I was even shocked when the Journal Sentinel called him out because they endorsed him. Even though they knew that he had mismanaged our county, the county is in a horrible state because of the way that he left it. You know, they never really gave full coverage to his lies or his mismanagement. What missteps. was the vote of turnout in, in, the, in Wisconsin last election? You know, off the top of my head, I, I cannot remember, but um, it was not an overwhelming turnout. There was about 50%, uh, 60% turnout. See, Don, a, a lot of Democrats would turn off and 210 because the promise of 08. Mm -hmm. And the vote was, the Democratic vote was down. So the Tea Party's vote was not so high. Mm -hmm. the Democratic vote was go. very low because people there lost their enthusiasm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we just saw that here in Chicago with a 41% turnout. Um, 
I mean, crucial things on the table. So it is, again, but so the, the Democrats, the president needs to rally around. This is a beautiful, a perfect opportunity. And we've to, taken it. We've taken it, but okay. we have to then, we have to sustain it because then Rick is talking about how the Koch brothers are going to be funding your demise, basically. Well, and and the, I, the left has to start coming, stepping up to the table with money. And they have, and I want to say that. I mean, individuals have done a few things. One, one of the things, all those people that have been at the Capitol, oh, people have been collecting names Great. and collecting data. And so you can be Emails, assured of that. Yeah, yeah. Connecting money. email information. People have been doing movement. fundraisers. Right. You know, $14, that, you know, might need to be a little bit more than $14. But, you know, the point is that they've done it and they've raised a significant right. amount of dollars. You know, uh, on our behalf going, in that regard. My concern, though, is in that bill that my governor has done and why I'm sitting in Illinois instead of being in Wisconsin is that bill also takes the union's ability to even collect in their present existence, right, whatever little bitty left, collect dues right. from members. And if for whatever reason they don't certify, they have to um, certify every year. Mm -hmm. If they don't certify yeah. every year, then they can't be uh, organized for one year. So it really is union busting. But it's, it's, it's a big decision at moment at the crossroads for the Democratic Party. You know, the uh, Democratic Party would not join the March from Seven of Montgomery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they couldn't quite come and thought that might make it political. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, have not quite spoke with a clear voice on the Egyptian Revolution yeah. because they, the, the alliance of the tyrants over, over tolerance. Yes. And now in Wisconsin, if there ever a time to have a high-profile yeah. showdown, in the Chicago election, 36% of the blacks voted out of 650,000, maybe 200,000 voted. My point is, in, uh, was in Michigan, last election, out of 630,000 voted, eligible, 63,000 voted. So if, there's a, if the enthusiasm does not come back up in the bottom again, the Democrats can, cannot win in 2012. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fascinating thing about the connection between Wisconsin and Egypt is that in Egypt, What's going on basically is an economic struggle. There are labor strikes, and there are strikes against high food prices. The reason that there are high food prices is because of the kind of economic policies that have been pushed by mm -hmm. people like Robert Rubin, uh, people like uh, Timothy Geithner to liberalize trade policies. So the Democrats are in a difficult position that they've supported a lot of these policies. Well, they have well, to well, jump, that, jump in. A, a lot of folks I met with in Wisconsin are fixed income type people. Right. And with gas moving towards five, maybe $10 a gallon, mm -hmm. and it's not just the gas pump, it's, it's food and all of that. We could be looking at the fact that beyond our conversation called Libya yeah. and called Egypt and called Suez Canal. And which side is Barack Obama going to be on in this struggle? Is he going to be on the Robert Rubin neoliberalism side or is he going to be the side of the surging masses of ordinary people who are fighting for their livelihoods and their families and to be in the middle class. Jonathan? Um, we'll have to wait and see. Time is slipping away, and I do believe the president should get to Wisconsin. I think it, it could be a ground zero. And I see Wisconsin um, as a beautiful scenario. This is a rural America rising up, uh, if I were to frame the... It's the, not the, all rural. <laughs> but in so many ways, it's, a, well, it, it's, it's an agricultural But, but they have not been fighting is. back in a big way. So in oh, rural that's America, true. That's true. if this was just a Milwaukee fight, it'd be that dismissible. That wouldn't be there because that's a perfect example. Scott Walker, when he did this in Milwaukee, no, it was, oh, it's Milwaukee. You know, but now that individuals are seeing what's happening around the state, now it's, oh, my goodness. That's my point. We didn't when you, know. When you close the plants and light go out, we all look amazingly similar well, you know, in the dark. And that's you know, I had a person like, call me who said, I remember being across the table from him and telling him about Scott Walker and him telling me how great Scott Walker was and what he was going to be able to do. He called me yesterday and mm -hmm. said, Senator Taylor, I was wrong and you were right. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were right about Scott Did you Walker his and I was wrong. I said I accept it right after he <laughs> told me that he was going to do whatever he could to help me. Well, you know, like, <laughs> this, is, this is a political dynamic that we see in lots of states, New York, Illinois, Ohio, Wisconsin, in which basically there are concentrated urban areas that vote Democrat, and then the rest of the state votes Republican. See, the problem is, is that people were, I think, saddened, you know, um, by the election process. And what I'm hoping is that people are energized, because we have a primary going on right now, like but, you but did. But what I'm trying to but, say... But, but I need to say this to you. On April 5th, we have a primary going on for Supreme Court, and in my county, for Milwaukee County uh, Executive, the person running for county executive is Scott Walker's protege, okay? The person who is on the Supreme Court has said that he will endorse and support 
the Walker administration. This is before this happened. Now he's on the bench. And this is what his campaign said. So this is our last ditch effort also in our state to be able to have any kind of checks and balances in the three branches of government. Because clearly the legislature is going to, is this rubber stamp legislature. If students can tie in the student loan debt crisis, which affects all of them, and register and revolt, they'll have the ability to win those elections. Students are literally camping in the Capitol, sleeping in the Capitol. They are the individuals who have held the fort down. I just did a rally with them by phone yesterday in the rotunda of the Capitol and told them that what they're doing is important. And I thank them for standing their ground and saying, we won't take it. You're in the Fannie Lou Hamer tradition, girl. Listen, I'm excited. I'm excited. Be right back. Some closing thoughts sent to Lena Taylor, uh, a runaway from uh, Wisconsin. Be right back in just a moment. Don, in this uh, Wisconsin ground zero labor, striker, labor struggle across the country, what's next? Well, next is firing up the troops. I'm inspired every day by what I see happening in Wisconsin when I, when I meet people like the senator. I'm hopeful. This is not a last stand for unions. I think this is the beginning of a new day in America. First thing. I'm a Milwaukee native. I'm very proud of what's going on in Wisconsin. I grew up among lots of racist people, but I, the, the, the thought of uh, building a biracial coalition for justice in a place like Wisconsin is just enormously hardening for someone like me. Jonathan? I think Milwaukee can lead the, the nation in an example of reform in education, uh, a voice for rural America, and uh, solving the fiscal issues by putting Americans back to work. Wisconsin needs an economic plan. So, Linda, how, how long will you guys hold out? We're standing firm at this juncture. One day longer. Uh, you know, hey, I'm not going back today, and tomorrow's church, so I'm not going back tomorrow, and our show ain't going back on Monday. So, you know, we'll see what it we'll see what it is. Now, the issue is when he put that budget out, it's going to be very scary. Nine hundred million dollars is what they say is coming out of education. So that's our future. You know, I'm just going to say this. I have a favorite candy. It's now, or later, so I like apples. They're going to see us now, or they're going to see us later. Oh boy. Let me express my thanks to you for watching us tonight. And uh, don't forget, uh, hit us online, www.rainbowpushcoalition.org. Join the movement. Don't just admire us, follow us, get engaged. Convention June 18th to 22nd in Chicago, the Hilton Hotel. Prepare to come to the convention that we must convene to fight for workers, to have a voice, to fight for jobs, to fight against growing poverty, to fight uh, for racial justice and gender equality. Find his own. I want to thank you for watching tonight. God bless you and keep hope alive.